Welcome back to the Sports Night Zone. We continue talking football. Mount Pleasant Football Club have announced that after two seasons in charge, the contract of coach Tiro Tapper Whitmore and his technical staff will not be renewed when they expire on July 31st. Whitmore took charge of the St. Anne Base Club in July 2022 and led them to back-to-back -back finals and a championship title in 2023. Well, the statement, it said, The club is embarking on a new direction which synchronizes Mount Pleasant Academy and Mount Pleasant Football Club. Mount Pleasant will shortly announce a new technical team to chart the course of the club. The club is committed to achieving all the sporting goals and objectives, entering this new phase and new direction. All right, so Mount Pleasant Sporting Director, of course, Paul Christie, joins us this afternoon to share the rationale behind the club's decision. Welcome to the Sports Max Zone, Paul. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm okay. All right, so this news, of course, um, breaking uh, a few days ago. Um, I have to say it was a bit surprising, Paul, but let's start with, you know, the decision, the, the thought process into, of course, saying that, you know, Tiro Tapa Whitmore, he'll no longer be a part of this setup. And he, we will not renew the contract because we want to make it clear that, you know, he was not dismissed, but as a matter of fact, you know, his contract was just not renewed. Well, uh, let me first put it on record that Mr. Theodore Whitmore or his technical staff was never dismissed. They were informed with two months to go on their, their, their con existing contract. They would have been formally communicated, communicated by the leadership of the Mount Pleasant organization that the contract will not be renewed. So at no point, there are existing employees of Mount Pleasant right now. They have not been terminated in any way, shape or form. All right. And one of the things that stood out for me in that press release is the fact that the club is embarking on a new direction. Can you tell me a bit about this direction that you're talking about? Well, uh Ownership of the organization would have sat in extended meetings and meetings and meetings before they would have arrived at this direction going forward. And uh, as such, uh, we've decided that we will be going in a direction which will synchronize uh, both the academy as well as the first team going forward in an interview in an article that was published online done with you of course one of the points again that stood out is the fact that you know y'all are pushing the youths um youth will be um one of the areas that you concentrate on can you agree is that what you said yes basically the, the academy as well as the first team will be synchronized Okay, so does that mean... And it will be a pathway for the, for the kids from the academy to graduate into the first team. Right, and then, you know, I started to think about the Mount Pleasant team itself. It does have a, a lot of senior players that, you know, you all might start to consider their contract. Um, is that something that you've been thinking about? Will you be keeping the current crop of Mount Pleasant players? Or are you going through a process now to see... Who fits, who you'll be letting go, and how soon will we know that? Well, as we speak, the process is continuing. It's actually started already. Who will fit, who will uh, be representing another entity at the next season, and all of those things are carefully started out, and we are actually going through that process as we speak right now. What about the process to get a new head coach, Paul? Uh, do you have anybody in mind? Well, as I've said to you earlier, Ron, uh, Mount Pleasant is synchronizing the academy and the first team. So, as it is now, the person who is in extended dialogue with the 
ownership of the organization is Mr. Al Thomas. He is the head of football at the academy presently. And they are, they are, what we are trying to do now is to put everything under one number. Mm. So you'll have one person that is in charge of all football at the academy. And that person it is now is Mr. Al Thomas. Yeah, and uh, Paul, just to repeat for emphasis for the benefit of our viewers, you said a couple of minutes ago that the coaching staff would have been informed, you know, prior that their contract would not have been renewed. So we take it then that even if Mount Pleasant had won the championship and repeated as champions, uh, Whitmore and his staff would not have been retained? Well, let me say this. Um, let me use the opportunity to thank Mr. Theodore Whitmore, Mr. David M. Ferguson, and the rest of the technical staff for their selfless commitment over the past two years. And they have reached and exceeded expectations. And I must use this opportunity to say that both decisions are not correlated. So I'm, I'm trying to understand the, the, the answer that you just gave, though, with regard to the question I asked. You're, All right, you're, let you're, me say it again. Yes. The decision, yes. it was a two-year project Yes. that Mr. Whitmore and his team would have been presiding over. All parties would have been aware of that. At the end of the two-year, coming on to the end of the two-year program, the ownership decided that they'll, we, the organization will be going in a different direction. So. The fact that Mr. Whitmore would have won or not won the league is totally not taken into consideration. Yeah. None of that is taken into consideration in, the, in making decisions. It's based on economics and synchronizing the academy and the first team to try to have one organization, put it like that. Yeah. All right. Mount Pleasant, as, a, as an investment, has been, to me, a kind of a role model that other clubs could strive for. In fact, Mount Pleasant and Cavalier are the only Jamaican clubs that are ranked in the top 100 in the CONCACAF club, club rankings. Um, I know you had been previously involved with Don Beholden, Paul, so I, I don't expect you to speak disparagingly of them or any other team in, in Premier League football. But can you talk to us quickly about Mount Pleasant's organization and the kind of um, stability and investment that it, it represents as a club seeking to, to lift the quality of the domestic game in Jamaica? Well, at Mount Pleasant Football Academy, we are still trying to improve on I hear that all the time that we are a model. However, we still know that there are a lot of things to be done to improve, to catch up with the global market. And we are trying to, as a group, improve on what we have so that we can get to uh, to be the standard bearer, not just in Jamaica and the Caribbean, but try to fit in the CONCACAF model. We have intentions of being CONCACAF Champions League champion in seven years, and it starts now. And uh, so in seven years' time, we'd love to see a core that is homegrown in the Champions League. And uh, that's the project that we are working on as we speak. Yeah, that's a, a tall order, though, Paul, because currently they are ranked number 92 in CONCACAF as a club. And, um, That's why it's not today. It's seven years' time. And we are aware of the deficiency that is in the existing model. Yes. And we are committed as a group to put things in place to just not to just speak about it, but to be about it and continue pivot and pivot until we actually get it right. And we are committed to getting it right. So you're suggesting then, based on what you're saying, Paul, that if fans are impressed with Mount Pleasant right now, they haven't seen anything yet. Seven years from now, it will be more impressive. Yes, and we commit to that, and we are constantly trying to improve. Yeah, and could you talk quickly about the Jamaica Premier League and the quality of domestic football in the country? Because um, it is obvious that based on CONCACAF results and, you know, CONCACAF Champions League competitions, 
the Caribbean Football Union is behind the, behind the eight ball. And although, you know, Mount Pleasant and Sibau FC from the Dominican Republic and I think Robin Hood from Suriname are the leading CFU teams, um, there is obviously uh, a deficiency in, in CFU football. And uh, you see Mount Pleasant as leading the way to elevating the Caribbean game to match the rest of CONCACAF. And how are the and different ways that you'll get that done? Well, we want to take an inclusive approach. If we are competing in CONCACAF, then our market must be in CONCACAF. So it can't be restricted to the borders of Jamaica. We have, we will always pivot and look at what we need, what we need to improve. How can we get better? Where is the market that the best talents is and 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 uh, just uh, be very open-minded mm -hmm. in our approach until we eventually figure it out and get it right. We we in the borders of Jamaica, the JPL. We are doing okay. However, we think that we have an opportunity to be a standard bearer in the Caribbean and also compete at CONCACAF, and that is what our aim is about now. Yeah, and you just mentioned that the academy will be a more pivotal or play a more pivotal role in advancing the quality of Mount Pleasant's football. And you just said that you're, you, you'd probably look beyond the shores of the country as well. So is it that you would probably be looking to have teenagers from all of CONCACAF being a part of your academy? I know you already have some non-Jamaicans in your academy, so I, I know the ball has started rolling, but um, I think there are Caribbean players, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So is it that we may see players from Mexico and Canada and the USA being That's a part the whole of idea. Academy. As long as it's in CONCACAF, and we're not limiting ourselves. If there's Italian from Africa mm -hmm. that can fit in the model, then why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what we, do, we are committed to do is to improve the model as is right now so that we look forward to be uh, not just one that shows up, but one that competes at the CONCACAF level. That is our ultimate goal at Mount Pleasant. Yeah, Art Paul, I, I want to congratulate the Mount Pleasant outfit and uh, t uh, the club owner, Peter Gould, on the, the vision that you have for, for football with, with Mount Pleasant and so on, because if you are charting a different course now, it means that the kind of investment that you are putting in may not have immediate results. And we know how football clubs are. You want immediate results. And the, the, the course that you've just outlined does suggest to me that Physically, it is possible that Mount Pleasant won't be as potent uh, performance-wise in the next season as you've been since you came to the Premier League in 2018-2019 because you've never missed the playoffs and you've been one of the most con consistent teams in JPL football for five years now. All right, we truly believe that we can. Mm -hmm. All three things can happen up, up at, at the same time. We can develop, we can compete, and we can also win. So that's the model that we are, we, we, we are with the eye on the CONCACAF. We know that we know the route to get to the CONCACAF, and that is at the forefront of our mind. So in all of the planning, and the execution must be centered around how to get there, because it does not make a lot of sense if you are planning to get there. You are planning to be there, however, you, don't, you, you are not charting apart how to get there. So, yes, we have the talent that, we, that is at Mount Pleasant right now. We truly believe that they can compete and will compete, and we are always open to improve in whatever year, year has been necessary. Yeah. All right, and, Paul. Yeah, Paul, well, thanks for talking to us. We are going to continue this discussion with one of our um, sports match analysts after the break because... Um, you would understand that from a public standpoint, because of how regularly Mount Pleasant changes its coaches, you've had five or six coaches since you came to the Premier League in, in six seasons. Um, Tiga Davis had two different stints. Uh, Donovan Duke had been coach. Wally Downs was coach. Nick Eden was coach. Then Theodore Whitmore uh, becoming the coach. So uh, Mount Pleasant has had a, a track record of changing coaches regularly. So there was a need for us to get an explanation from Mount Pleasant uh, well, about, about, about this move and, you know, just some clarification about the statement that you released 
about charting a new course? And what we can say, we are not going to sit here and, and try to own the formula that we have it right. And when we recognize as a group and sit around the table and we realize we, whatever direction we need to pivot and based on the reality that is facing us, then we are prepared, we are open enough to have that discussion at any time for as long as it, is, it benefits the product, which is the actual football. So we are always open to pivot and move, as we move forward in a view of getting it right. Paul Christie, thanks for talking to us here on the Sportsmax Zone as we got some insight into Mount Pleasant's current status and its plan for a new technical staff to lift the team forward. Congratulations on the fine work that Mount Pleasant has uh, uh, put out in domestic football since you uh, were elevated to the top flight 2018-2019 and keep up the good work and give our regards to Peter Gold and the rest of the ownership team. Thanks, much. Thanks for having us. Okay, and we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.